Hey, what's good, YouTube? Um, I'm really excited to do this video because the way COVID-19 has really affected the U.S. economy um, is very, very revealing and very telling. And anybody who is a full-time employee or anybody who's an entrepreneur, just for anybody who's a citizen of the U.S., like you really need to watch this video to really understand what is actually going on and how you can protect yourself from being uh, stripped of your economic wealth as you move forward. Because as much as the COVID-19 pandemic is a real thing that is really killing people and is affecting people's health, it's, it's more of an economic destructor for many reasons. And so just to really get into the meat and heart of this video, like prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, we already had a crisis here in the U.S. And that crisis um, is about the obsession with working here in the United States. We unfortunately live to work while people in other countries merely just work to live. And here under this system of capitalism, which I'm gonna be doing a, another video on to really break down what the true meaning of capitalism is, but really capitalism is just a system of money. And under this system, everything's for profit, everything's for sale even people and currency really is uh, a measure of wealth based upon human output based upon human capital and because of the COVID-19 pandemic um, that stream of income that master stream of income aka human capital was disrupted and because that flow of money was disrupted um, the powers that be uh, wanted to switch some things up to make people want to get back to work and so there's a lot of things going on right now but I just want to say even before we got into COVID-19 we had a massive problem because everybody is obsessed with working and working and working and honestly humans are built to do more than just work and so we already had a pandemic prior to COVID, but COVID has just been a really great revealer. And um, I'm gonna explain why. So as mentioned before, we already had an economic crisis. And one of the main underlying causes of this economic crisis was the fact that we have millions and millions of overworked and underpaid employees. The current minimum wage in the US is I think $7.25, which is an abomination it's below the line of poverty and you and people are really expected to live off seven dollars and 25 cents an hour like that's not humanly feasible while at the same time we have ceo pay in the thousands and hundreds of percent higher than the minimum wage employee you have ceos making tens of millions of dollars a year while their minimum wage employees are making seven dollars and 25 cents a year like we already had this massive economic crisis but as the pandemic uh, uh, as the pandemic exploded across the u.s we had this so-called idea of the essential worker and so what what happened is that this basically separated the masses we had people who were deemed valuable who were deemed essential and then you had other people who were deemed non-essential and non-valuable and the people who were deemed essential well they were able to keep their jobs but the people who were deemed otherwise were let go and so you had all these people millions of people who lost their jobs because they weren't valued and many of these people who lost their jobs were the people who were working a lot of these minimum wage service jobs. And so after that happened, the government decided, hey, we need to help these people out that we didn't deem as valuable. So we're going to give them this thing called unemployment. And unemployment is a basic social welfare program. It's a program not meant to give people a basic source of income, but it's just an idea, a concept that gives people a little bit of money to help them pay the bills, get the essentials, food, water, clothing, and then move forward to eventually apply for full-time um, employment opportunities. But the issue with the COVID pandemic um, crisis was that was a catch-22, is that you want people to get back to work, but their jobs aren't deemed essential. So they're not able to get back to work. 
Another conundrum is that because people were making so little money, this unemployment benefits were actually valued greater than what people were making for their hourly wages. Like to me, it's a complete abomination that unemployment payments were double or triple, but they were more than what people were making for their hourly uh, jobs on a weekly basis. And so you had a lot of people collecting unemployment who were just sitting back and were like, wow, I'm making more money on unemployment than I was at my full-time job. And so what this has done is this provided people with a great awakening of their personal time value and their personal freedom value. It's like, okay, I've been busting my butt at this job that doesn't appreciate me. I'm overworked, I'm overstressed, I'm underpaid, but now I'm able to get this money and I'm able to spend more time with my family, able to spend more time with myself, able to think, able to understand that, hey, something's wrong with this system. And so unemployment has been like a massive blessing to a lot of people who were basically, you know, paid, you know, serfs, paid slaves at their jobs. And so people have really begun to understand that like life is really more than work, but that's a problem within this capitalistic system. And since the zenith of the pandemic uh, crisis, we've slowly begun to economically recover. We're recovering. America is bouncing back. But there's a massive fallacy in that idea because the quote unquote jobs that are being back to the economy are not being added. Like we had millions of people laid off. And what's actually happening is that a lot of these jobs are being backfilled. So they're trying to rehire the people that were once laid off. And so by definition, the word adding means <laughs> in addition to like we have more than what we just had. And so if you're backfilling jobs, you're not adding anything. Like we're still in a massive hole. If I lost 10 employees and I hired back five people, I didn't add five jobs. I'm still down five jobs. So the way that these economic statistics are being promoted are just extremely deceptive and they're actually just very, very wrong. And then furthermore, like unemployment itself, the unemployment rate is just, it's a complete fallacy. Like it's not being calculated accurately. Like the the biggest number that's being left out is the amount is the amount of discouraged workers like the amount of people who have just ceased searching for work amount of people who've given up searching for work the unemployment numbers can easily be double or triple what they are and so these numbers like these statistics that are being put out are not accurate so we do not have a true picture of what the unemployment number really is but more so the bigger issue is that people are not being paid fair and um, reasonable wages for their work and what they're doing for the moment. Um, it's really a fallacy to believe that the economy is bouncing back because we still have people, millions of people who are still unemployed. We have inflation uh, going up, which means the prices of our common uh, goods and services are rising. The value of the dollar is lowering, so we're actually in a period of stagflation. And so a lot of these numbers that we're seeing that are quote unquote positive really are not. Moreover, a lot of states right now are actually cutting a lot of the unemployment benefits. And most of these states doing so are actually the red or the Republican states. The majority of Democratic states are actually holding off for the moment. But there are several reasons why unemployment is really being cut and they're not discussing it. Number one is the fact of payroll taxes. When people are employed, these employers have to pay payroll taxes to the state. And so if people are unemployed, the state no longer collects these payroll taxes. And these payroll taxes are in the tens, hundreds uh, of millions of dollars, and maybe in some cases, billions of dollars. But that no longer exists when people are unemployed. So states want that revenue. So you're, so unemployed people are worth nothing to the state, but an employed person at a job with only making minimum wage is worth millions of dollars to the state. So number one reason why unemployment is being cut is because of payroll taxes. Number two is that they really want to force people back to work. I mean, like I said before, capitalism is a system of money and the most profitable element within the uh, system, of cap uh, system of capitalism is the human capital, is the human element. Like without people, the system, none of this stuff works. 
and people are the most valuable resource. And that's how companies make money. They pay people less than what they produce. And so people aren't making as much money as a whole. I mean, you have a lot of billionaires making billions and billions of dollars, but as a whole, state governments, business owners are not making as much money as they need to. So they need their humans to get back to work. So that's another, that's the second reason why uh, unemployment is being ended. And then third overall is just the American greed. Like I said, how I introduced this video, the biggest problem with America is the obsession of work. That people's value is put upon their salary, is put upon what they do, is, is put upon their economic output. And if you travel the world, if you get to experience other places, you'll quickly realize that there is more to life than just clocking in and clocking out at a job. But we have to keep this economic engine going. This is the number one economy in the world, right? So people need to get back to work. So those are the main reasons why I believe, uh, you know, unemployment has been cut. But what it's really starting to do is it's starting to awakening people to another reality. So in closing, with the pandemic uh, crisis, with the economy being in a free fall, with so many people being unemployed, with so many people being overworked and underpaid, with so many people collecting unemployment that is double or triple what they're making at their uh, jobs, I think we're undergoing a, a, a renaissance, a mental renaissance, because so many people have begun to realize that, hey, I am worth more than this minimum wage job. Time is money. No, time is gold. Money is silver. And that if I can really leverage this time to create something that's going to secure me and my family, that's not gonna allow me to be dependent upon this measly source of income, I might be better off in the future. And if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an aspiring entrepreneur, now is really the time to really to leverage for yourself and your benefit because you can't depend upon the system uh, to move you forward because at any moment in time, you could be deemed <laughs> as non-essential. You could be let go. Then you could be put on this unemployment and then that unemployment could get cut. Like you can't depend on anybody but yourself. And I really hope that COVID-19 is really provided people with this sense of empowerment to let them know that, hey, you gotta become the entrepreneur of your life. You can't just sit back and depend on a company or a government to really help you to move forward. Like you have to be the one to create the life you wanna live. And not everybody's gonna understand this, not everybody's gonna see this, but for those of you who have waken up to what's going on right now, um, I, I really commend you because you gotta become the entrepreneur of your life. You got to. So my question for you today is, how has the COVID-19 pandemic affected how you view your work life i'm really curious to hear your thoughts so please be sure to drop your comments below and if you want to become the entrepreneur of your life you can begin this process by subscribing to this channel also be sure to click the notification bell to be alerted whenever new content drops until next time